So while I was on my involuntary vacation from YouTube, I was thinking about Nintendo, as I do, and I decided it would be fun to take a trip down memory lane, cause Nintendo themselves isn't doing too much at the moment, and take a look at my personal favorite games from each Nintendo system. Unfortunately, after making that list, it was just pretty bland and generic, I mean I feel like a lot of people's list is, you know, gonna be comprised of the Mario Karts, the Smash Bros, the Zeldas, the Marios, and while obviously it's fine to like all that stuff, I don't want to just stand here and tell you about games you already know for like 10 minutes or so, so instead I tried to limit myself to not repeating any series on this list, generally picking games that didn't sell well or you don't really associate with the console they're on, no ports were allowed, and I've never even touched a Virtual Boy so I didn't do anything with that. When the best NES game of all time is brought up, it's generally between Super Mario Bros. 1 and Super Mario Bros. 3. However, unfortunately, I think the best Super Mario Bros. game on the NES is neither of those. Super Mario Bros. 2, aka Doki Doki Panic, if you're, you know, a, a nerd, is a really underrated Mario game because it really just cements a lot of what Mario Bros. is. And despite doing that, it's overlooked because it's a reskin of a different game and the whole history of that game is weird. It's kind of like the black sheep of the Mario franchise, but this game is really important. Not only does it create the uh, character traits for, you know, Blue Toad and, and Peach, which returns so majestically in Super Mario 3D World, but it's just an overall great game. I'd wager to say it's some of 2D Mario at its best, which is funny because it's not really a traditional 2D Mario game. When thinking of the Game Boy, generally people think of games that you can kind of just pop in, play for a few minutes, and then quit. I'm talking stuff like Tetris or Dr. Mario. However, one of the Game Boy's best and most underrated games is a long-form adventure on par with its console counterparts. Metroid 2 The Return of Samus is one of the greatest games in the Metroid series. Despite it being in either black and white or really limited color, the atmosphere this game creates, even with its limited range of graphical options, is just incredible. The the fact that they were able to fit an entire Metroid game with very minimal compromises onto the Game Boy is just, it, it's, it blows my mind, and this game is so underrated for what it is. Unlike its 8-bit predecessor, the SNES actually has games that you kind of want to return to. Not throwing shade on the NES, or I guess I am throwing shade, most of those games you just can't really go back to, they're so buggy and janky and it's just not really enjoyable. However, I find myself going back to replay SNES games all the time. The one game I go back to more than any other, however, is Donkey Kong Country 2. All the games so far have been 2D platformer sequels, but they're all just really good. Donkey Kong Country 2 in particular is just... It, the way it pushes the SNES's musical capabilities is phenomenal. David Wise is a genius, and the music in this game is just, it, it's, it's, it's truly like stunning, it's, it's breathtaking. On top of that, the platforming is really good, the graphics are some of the best on the SNES. This was the game that cemented Donkey Kong Country as the best Nintendo 2D platformer. Yeah, I said it. In my opinion, the N64 kind of falls into that trap that the NES does. A lot of the games are kind of buggy and you can't really go back to replay them as easily. However, the game I go back to replay the most is a 3D platformer, more of a collect-a-thon than anything. It's looked back upon fondly and has a killer soundtrack. That's right, I'm talking about Banjo-Kazooie. I no joke think this game is better than Super Mario 64. Banjo-Kazooie is hands down the best N64 game I've ever played. Every single polygon in that game just exudes this like wondrous feel if any of you guys were lucky enough to go to Disney World as a child and kind of have that feeling that you were like stepping into another world, but not a world like our own, a world where like everything is going perfectly, you can't get like hurt or anything, and the only feeling you can experience is like pure joy, Banjo-Kazooie is probably the closest a video game has ever gotten to, you know, recreating that feeling for me. I know at the start of this list I said I was going to try and pick games that weren't super popular, and picking a Pokemon game is literally the exact opposite of that, but I can't help it. If Generation 3 of Pokemon, specifically Pokemon Sapphire, didn't exist, I would not be playing video games today. This game sucked me in in a way that I didn't think video games could. I thought video games were like something dumb you kind of played with your friends and, and would have a dumb laugh and, and then that was it. All that changed when I got a grey Game Boy Advance SP and a copy of Pokemon Sapphire to call my own. It's so cliche, I still remember hiding under my covers playing the game when my mom would come in and, and you know, hiding the Game Boy under my pillow. Like, that, that actually happened happened to me, it's crazy to think about. I know it's not generally regarded as one of the best Pokemon games, but in my heart it will always be king. 
Kirby's Air Ride on the GameCube is probably the most underrated game on this list. I never see people talk about this game, and that sucks because it is so good. Not only does it have a full-on racing mode, because, well, of course it does, and some top-down mode that I never really messed with but I've heard is pretty fun, but City Trials is like if the gameplay of Mario Kart mixed the mayhem with Mario Party and all culminated in a Smash Bros-esque finish. It's just like, it, it is such a fun game. Get a group of socially distanced friends and start playing Kirby's Air Ride, you know you're you're gonna be having a banging time. I never really got into Mario sports games, but Mario Hoops is an absolute banger. I guess it's because I never really played tennis or golf or any of those games, but I have dabbled in basketball from time to time. It must be that prior real life experience that, you know, helps me out in this incredibly realistic title. Seriously though, I'd wager to say this is one of the most underrated Mario spin-offs of all time. It needs a sequel on Switch, I mean, we got Mario Hoops 3 on 3 on the DS, why not Mario Hoops 2 on 2 to take advantage of the two Joy-Cons built into every system? Speaking of Mario spin-offs, I will die on a hill saying that Mario Party 8 is the best Mario Party. While yeah, all of them before 8 are all pretty much similar, I do honestly think 8's the best because it has some of the most unique boards, and it just seems like Nintendo and Hudson really, you know, clicked in and just focused on everything that made Mario Party so fun. The selection of minigames is varied and unique, the amount of side gameplay modes there is is, is really quite astounding, yet unlike Super Mario Party that tried to focus on side modes, Mario Party 8 actually has more than four boards and a good core mode. For my money, this is the best Mario Party you can get. Before I said Kirby's Air Ride is the most underrated game on this list, but Kid Icarus Uprising is not far behind. I would say this is one of the highest quality games Nintendo has ever put out on a handheld. The fact that they were able to pack this high quality graphics into an early 3DS game, it astonishes me, and if you couple that with the score that sounds like it's from like Final Fantasy or something, just presentation wise, Nintendo killed it with this one. The only thing that held it back was the fact that it was on the 3DS. If you could imagine this game on the Wii U, anyone who's played it knows that this would be, you know, generally regarded as probably one of the top Nintendo games ever made. I know at the beginning I said I was going to try and surprise you guys with my picks and not just do the generic ones that you would expect, but I literally would not be able to sleep at night if I didn't include Super Mario 3D World as my favorite Wii U game. I honestly think I would have like broken out into a fever or something or had like, you know, a, a terrible rash or something. Like it just, it goes against my very genetic code as a human. I love 3D World way too much and at this point it's just become a meme on the channel, but I'll honestly go along with the meme because of how much I love the game. What more can be said about this game? I just, it, it's so good. Finally, the Switch. This is kind of a hard one because A, the console, you know, isn't done with the games yet, and B, my thoughts on games change over time. I feel like that's only human, but for some reason a lot of people don't like to admit that on the internet. So this one could really change, you know, anytime soon, and I'm not gonna try and choose Breath of the Wild or something like Mario Odyssey, because, I mean, everyone, you know, knows those games. Those are generally brought up, like Smash Bros. Instead, I want to talk about Splatoon 2. I think Splatoon 2 is the best bang for your buck game on the Nintendo Switch. For $60, you get a full multiplayer mode which even though the game is like three years old now, it sold something like 10 million copies, so there are going to be people online. You get a full multiplayer mode featuring ranked and a ton of maps, like a ton of maps, a ridiculously overkill amount of weapons, a full horde mode in Salmon Run, a campaign that takes upwards of like 60 hours to 100%, a ridiculous amount of clothes you can collect with abilities you can customize to improve your in-game stats, and if you're having fun you can pay another 20 bucks to get one of the coolest DLCs Nintendo's ever made. Obviously Splatoon 2 is not an unknown game, but when people talk about the best game on Switch, this game never really gets brought up. It seriously should be part of the discussion, it's one of the best. With that out of the way, hopefully you guys all enjoyed. If you did enjoy, hitting the like button means a lot to me. Obviously this isn't a rumor and speculation video, I'm gonna do a channel update, you know, eventually once the Mario remasters either get announced or don't get announced and I, you know, quit doing all those crazy like speculation videos. I'm gonna make a channel update, but just letting you guys know, cause if you watch this far you deserve to know. The hope with the channel is to eventually do, you know, only really high quality stuff that's like either scripted out or takes a lot of time to, you know, make or edit. While I do enjoy making the speculation videos and you guys really do love them and the support, you know, means the world, obviously I can't do them forever and I don't want to. I want to, you know, diversify and make content that I truly want to make. So after these Mario Remasters things either, you know, again, 
come out or don't come out, expect a lot more of this style of content. More retrospective content that you can kind of watch whenever instead of just right when it comes out. With that out of the way, thank you guys all so much for watching. I had to go through like over 10 games and I tried to keep it brief, but this video did get pretty long. So if you made it this far, seriously, thank you. It means the world. Follow me on Twitter and check out our podcast, Nintendo Tonight. All will be linked below. With that out of the way, I'm Thomas from the Switch Stop signing off. Peace.